What's up, everybody? Bootsy Greenwood here, and I'm coming to you live from Lake Travis, beautiful Austin, Texas. Happy to be out here and meeting with one of the most interesting people I've met by way of a good friend of mine, my good friend Tiff Feedy, the Love Priestess. She's on the podcast Blue Collar Mystics with me uh, toward the beginning of it, and she has introduced me to truly one of the most interesting and influential people to me uh, that I've met, and I'm about to go meet her and have dinner with her and her partner, uh, and I'm very excited, looking forward to it, and it's been a really cool trip out here to Austin. <laughs> I was not planning to come out here, but when we had a call, Courtney said to me, you need to come to Austin, and I'll be honest with you guys, if she said, you need to put this blindfold on and run into this burning building, I wouldn't ask questions. I would just fucking do it. <laughs> and that may seem crazy. I don't know. I don't know that I can even explain uh, my level of blind faith in uh, another human being like that. Uh, but I've had a hard time finding people to work with as, as mentors, uh, to, to mentor me, um, for you know several different reasons. And I'm very picky and choosy about who I'll work with. But very excited to be able to speak with her. And even just being here, I feel like I've had a ton of insights and awakening type of moments, um, revelations even, if you will. And I wanted to talk a little bit about today, specifically, if you've been following me for a while, you understand the idea of pendulums from reality transurfing. If you don't, I've made several videos about it. Essentially, what a pendulum is, is it's an energetic informational structure bound by an energy that's essentially vibrating at the same frequency. Uh, that sounds a little bit woo-woo and out there to you. I get it. Not a big fan of the woo-woo stuff. I'm more of a practical person myself. But think of it like this. Think of an energy like going to a football game or being part of a church, if you've ever been inside of a church, like particularly like a Pentecostal church, like what ones that I grew up in. Or if you've ever been, um, you know, Part of a part of a flash mob, or um, just a, a movement where things happened almost spontaneously, and it didn't even seem like you even had a choice in the matter. Then that is essentially what the author is talking about. These pendulums or thought forms are energy that essentially preys on us to get more energy for itself and creates reactions within us. So I'll be provoked by a pendulum. It might be someone cutting me off in traffic. It might be a newscaster on Fox News or CNN News or whatever. Pick your poison as far as the media goes. And it will cause a reaction in me. And that guttural, instinctual reaction will immediately create me reacting and giving my energy over to that thing. Okay, That's essentially how a pendulum works. If you want more of an explanation, go into the other videos. But here's what happens. Whenever we are stimu whenever there's a stimulus, we have some sort of a unconscious um, reaction to it within ourselves, and then we externally react to it. So I've gotten a pretty profound insight into this, <clears throat> and I want to share it here, because something happens to us inside once the stimulus happens, and then we respond externally. Well, if we don't respond externally, then we keep our energy. And that is a plus for us in the video game called reality, which keeps us moving forward, progressing toward our goal, and not getting in our own way, not tripping over our own feet, because something else outside of us has drawn our attention away from what it is that we should be focusing on, which is ourselves, our mission, our purpose, our goal. But what I want you guys to think about is that there's layers to this, okay? We're having an emotional experience. That is what life is. All the time, our emotions are going up, down, around. We're nervous. We're scared. We're excited. We're passionate. We're happy. We're sad. Every single minute, our emotions are fluctuating. And every single minute within us, as these pendulums are creating these stimuli, we are subconsciously trying to figure out what that is, putting a story together, 
defining the meaning of the feeling that we're feeling, and then responding to it. So it happens very, very fast, but if we can get a glimpse and an insight into this, then we can ultimately stop ourselves from reacting to it. So if it's someone cutting us off in traffic, we immediately almost knee-jerk reaction, tell ourselves a story that A, this is uncomfortable, I don't like this feeling, B, this person is in the wrong and I have a right to you know, lash out as a result of what they have done or what has happened to me. But just for a second, I want you to think about what would happen if you just allowed the emotion to be without defining it or putting a story around it. What if you just felt the emotion of being pissed off in that moment and you didn't react? Because these emotions, this range of emotions, constantly up and down. And I want you to think about a baby. Think about a child, a small child. A child is just having an experience. That's it. It's just having an experience. It doesn't know that it's bad if it's hungry and tell itself a story that it never gets fed on time. It just is hungry and it just cries until it gets fed. And that's it. It's literally just having an experience without a definition and without a story around it. So if we, just like children, like it says in the Bible, can allow whatever's happening and unfolding within us to just happen, and we don't surround it with a story, whether we're depressed or sad or having a bad day, all of those things are part of life. All of those things are going to happen to each and every one of us, no matter what. Obviously, it's uncomfortable to have feelings that you don't like. But for a second, I want you to just consider this. What is the difference between anxiety and excitement? Let's say you're about to go on stage. Or you're about to go up to the plate to bat for a home run in the bottom of the night. It's 3-2, you know, and you're stepping in to the batter's box or it's the last second and you just got past the ball and it's 99 to 99 and you launch that three-pointer or whatever it is. Are, the, are those emotions, that anxiety or anxiousness or nervousness or excitement, are those good or bad? And the truth is, like Tufty says, you're a snail, Neo. Because we don't really understand the consequences in those moments. We're so nearsighted to this emotion I don't like and it's bad and I want it out of my body right now and it must be bad. When in reality, everything is unfolding in a manner at which you have no choice but to trust. There are so many things happening that we cannot control and we even try to control ourselves and I'll just say I don't think for a lot of it I don't think a lot of the stuff that happens, we can even control ourselves. We are just kind of at the whim of a lot of things. Now, what we can control is how we react or if we're proactive to these stimuli that hit us and how we respond to those things. So that's something that we consciously do have the ability to alter. And it takes time and it takes patience and it takes the willingness to just experience the emotion like a child to just open up and feel whatever feelings are there. Let's say that you're in bed with your significant other, someone you love, someone you care deeply about. It's early in the morning and they wake up and they uh, have a gnarly look on their face and you're worried, like, maybe they don't feel very good. Maybe it's because of you. Maybe it's because of something you said. Maybe they're gonna leave you. Maybe they're gonna be in a bad mood. Maybe they're excited to see you. Maybe they just need to wake up. But you're putting all of these ideas in your own head and thinking about all of these different scenarios and situations that could happen, and none of them are actually in any way related to you. They're just emotions that you're having in that moment while you're experiencing that other person. And that other person's having and experiencing their own emotions as well. <laughs> they're coming out of a dream. They're tired. They're waking up into this reality once again. And so instead of projecting and assuming and telling yourself a story 
about what they may or may not do or what may or may not happen throughout the course of the day. You could simply just be there and allow whatever feelings arise in you to allow, to, to arise, to be there, to exist within your psyche, within your being. And by doing that, you are keeping your energy in the moment as opposed to pushing it out, giving it to the pendulum, giving in to the story or the definition of the way you feel in your body and the definition that you have attributed to it. This is a bad feeling. They're unhappy. They're not going to want to stick around. They're going to want to leave today. That's bad. Is it bad? Ultimately, in time, things will roll out and you'll notice probably whatever happened wasn't actually bad in that sense, right? Like it's such a subjective term. So in those moments, what I encourage you to try to do is just be present and allow the emotions to be there without putting a story, right? Like a baby. Okay, I feel very tense right now. I feel relaxed. I, you know, and we don't even have to define the emotions. That's even better. But you can. I'm not saying don't completely, you know, but essentially no matter what it is that happens to us, we are having an experience. And I want you to think about this as the last thing. If you were watching a movie and everything great happened to the character and it was just easy street the whole freaking way, there was never any struggle, there was never any uh, strife, there was never any bad things that happened to this character, how much would you love that character? How much would you identify with that character? And how much would you cheer for that character? Because for me, I would be bored as fuck. I wouldn't care. I would completely disengage and I wouldn't relate to that character whatsoever. So let's put the focus back on ourselves now as we are each playing out our own movie and understanding that within our frame right now that we're experiencing something that's part of a much larger story. It could be that hero's journey. And which is twofold, by the way. There's the internal and the external hero's journey. The external we see on the screen, but the internal is the change that happens within the character. Whenever they basically let go and allow whatever is happening internally to happen and to unfold. Like a baby. It doesn't really matter what the story is or what the definition is at the raw experience level. It is just the feeling, it is just the emotion, and we are just simply human beings having emotional experiences. Spiritual beings having this emotional human experience. We're not really even doing anything that consciously. Let's be real. We use, we use our conscious, logical minds mostly just to justify whatever actions that we do take. So as opposed to starting out with that story in advance and deciding that this is good or this is bad. My car broke down. It's bad. You know, I, the way I feel is bad. I don't like the way that I feel right now. And it's bad. It just, it's okay to feel the way you feel and not necessarily have any story attached to it. In fact, I believe that is a little bit of an insight, a little bit of a crack into the code of what Buddha said, that life is suffering. It's not that the feeling is always suffering. The feelings are fleeting. They're up and down, excited, disappointed, passionate, relaxed, tense, etc. It's the story that we tell ourselves about the way we feel that is where the suffering comes from. So if we can learn to just be in the moment and ultimately just experience whatever is happening within us, then we keep a lot of our power and we'll never be able to be, we'll never be ruled, we'll never be at the whim or the behest of pendulums again. We can simply allow the feelings that the pendulums instill within us to be there without actively giving our energy through a reaction to it. So something I've been thinking about I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being a subscriber to this channel. I have my purpose course. It's absolutely free on Patreon. If you're in the Austin area, come see me. I got shows on Tuesday. Probably get out of here Wednesday, maybe Thursday. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I got a lot of stuff going on. If you're in this area, hit me up. Say hello. Um, and check out the Patreon. I've got a lot of really good stuff in there, and I'm going to continue 
to add things to it. Thank you so much again for being a subscriber to this channel and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace. God be with you.